Introducing the 2017 Acer Aspire for DaVinci Resolve. Under the hood, it's packing integrated graphics and 12 gigabytes of memory. With a 6-bit display, you get over 250,000 colors, covering up to 67% of the sRGB color space. But when it's all you got, can you make it work? Well, this whole video, including what you saw at the beginning, was done on this computer. So, how do you color grade on a bad display? Hey guys, Nathan here. So, if you can't tell, I'm not in my studio. I'm actually out on the road on a like 4,000 kilometer road trip. That's like 2,000 miles for my American friends. And I've been away from home for the past couple weeks and well, I need to still get work done. So I'm stuck with my old laptop with a terrible display. And ultimately you gotta work with what you got, right? And it got me thinking that most people starting out don't have great computers or great displays for that matter. I don't even have great displays. For something high end, you're looking at spending thousands and thousands of dollars. So in today's video, we're talking all about how you color grade on bad displays just like this one and for reference being a 6-bit display it can output just over 250,000 colors which may sound like a lot but not when you think about that 8-bit is 16 million colors but before we get into that be sure to hit that like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this I typically put out two resolve tutorials a week but because I'm on the road there's only one video this week we're skipping Thursday and sailing right into next week back on schedule but anyway enough of me yammering let's get into it so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I'm going to be showing today can be done in the free version of Resolve now the first thing that you have to think about and get your head around as a concept is that you cannot trust what you're seeing on your display. And that may be a little bit tricky to get your head around, but even if we're outputting to just an sRGB color space, this can only cover 67% of that color space. So there's a ton of colors that you're not going to be able to see. In addition to the color accuracy of a monitor like this is not great. So even the colors you're seeing aren't gonna be right. They can make this better by getting some color profiles in line and trying to calibrate the monitor, but at a certain point, you're gonna have to accept that the image you're seeing is probably not the actual image. And that's where we rely heavily on our tools like our waveforms. Now in this video, I'm not going to be covering so much using Resolve Color Management and different workflows like that. It's more using scopes and your correction tools within Resolve to still color grade on a bad display. So we have our opening shot revealing the laptop as it just kind of pans down and we do that little transition. So what I'm gonna do first is I wanna bring out my contrast. So I'm going to just pull this out and just see what we're looking at on our waveform here. So pulling out our contrast also introduces some saturation to the image, which is great. Now, what I want for this look is I want that clean white commercial look and well, to get it, you have to be white balanced. Now, fortunately, this room is white, so that's gonna be our reference that we're going off of to try and get these cupboards here white. Now, if you've seen this channel before, you probably know what I'm gonna do next. I love the white balance eyedropper tool. It's great to change your white balance, but also tell you the exact red, green, and blue values of that specific area. So, we're looking at what should be white, but it's coming in fairly red. And we can see that on our waveform here with red being our most dominant channel, green and then blue and I bet you that's going to be reflected in this white. So what we can do is we can click on that area and it's trying its best to make it white. But we see it's done an okay job but I think we can get a little bit better by again not going by our display but going by our waveform. I want to get this area around here so here on the waveform to line up a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in to my controls and make some adjustments maybe on my temperature slider. I'm just trying to get it so everything lines up perfectly white. Yeah, that's coming in a little bit better and just to see from beginning to this, so now we are balanced a little bit more. We're now going to do some exposure controls and again, just by using our waveform here. So let's go into our primary bars. We're gonna drop down our lift a little bit 
maybe pull up our gamma and just really bring up the gain to kind of brighten things up and even clip some of the detail in these windows a bit more because it's not necessary for this particular shot. Now we can bump up our saturation a bit and this is where you're really gonna never be able to tell on a six bit display. I can crank this saturation all the way up and to you, this probably looks ridiculous, but on this display, to me, it looks just saturated enough. Because you're so limited in the colors you can see, saturation is gonna be super wonky. So a way to help deal with that, we're gonna go in and change our scopes and grab the CIE chromaticity. Now, what this is telling you is the colors that are within the Rec. 709 color space, which is this triangle here. Now, as you can see, we're at the bounds of this triangle. So we're definitely pushing it too hard. So I'm just gonna come over to my saturation and I'm just going to reset that. And you see how that got so much smaller? Now, we're going to push our saturation up a bit and just get near the edges there, there. I bet you that's going to be a more pleasing image. I can't tell by looking at my screen right now but by trusting my tools, I have a good idea that it's probably getting me closer. So that's great and all, but what about when you're trying to shot match, which is one of the biggest parts of color correction that always gets glossed over by folks. Super important to match your shots. So let's go to another clip and we'll get into that. Okay, so we have our corrected shot of this computer here, just a little focus pull and we want to match this shot with it that is not yet graded. So, so we're gonna right click on our corrected image and we're going to grab a still. We're then gonna come over here to the gallery and you can see, oh geez, I've taken a couple, but we have our still that we want to match with. Now we're gonna come back over to our uncorrected image. So if we double click on our still, we can bring up an image wipe and now we can kind of compare the two. And something you can also do is if we right click we can apply the grade to the image. So you'll see that applying the grade doesn't actually get us there. And this is because the camera was at the same setting, but it's two different lenses with different coatings and it has some different colors that are coming into play. So we're going to have to do some matching and it's easy when you have your image wipe up because then you can compare on our waveform, which is easy peasy. So we can see that our image on the left is not as dark as our image on the right. So we want to bring down our shadows a bit. And as we wipe through our image, we can see that we're getting much closer there in our shadows. They're pretty much bang on right down here. So that's great. So we're getting closer in our luminance levels. And how are we doing on the higher end? I think we should bring up our gain a little bit. So let's go into our primary wheels and we're just going to bring up that gain a scooch. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting a little bit brighter. Now, if you look here, we have quite a bit of blue going on, but that's expected because there's gonna be blue on the screen, but we want these black values to line up. Now, what we can do is we can actually just create a new node here, and we're going to go into our power windows, grab our pen tool, and just make a little box around here because we want our blacks to be the same. We're now going to go into highlight there. Now we want this to be black. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our shadows and adjust our wheel so that we get these on top of each other. And as you can see right now, this is kind of blue dominant. So there's a blue color cast going on in there and you can see that in your waveform. So we're going to just balance it out by bringing the opposite color in. So if we're to bring more blue in, it separates them further. But if we're to bring some yellow in, it's going to get everything a little bit closer and boom. And now they're all on top of each other. And if we go out of our highlight view, you can see this one area is definitely more black than the rest of it being blue. So we're going to disable our power window and bing, bang, boom, easy peasy. The shots appear to match better. And we can also see that on our waveform. So if we um, hit Control D on that node. We can see we have all this blue here. So I'm just going to get rid of this image wipe. So if we hit uh, Control D, we can see the after and the before, and you also see it on your waveform. We clean things up and we get things more white down here, which means our blacks are actually black and don't have that blue color cast going on. And it matches much more nicely to the image before as we swipe between the two images.
Nathan from the future here. While editing this video, I came across something. While correcting my talking head part, I wasn't sure about the saturation levels. So what I did, just to show you, here is what it looks like on my computer. I wonder if you can kind of see that to get a good representation. What I did was I then sent it out to my phone because chances are your phone is actually gonna have a pretty good screen provided you have a modern phone. I'm not saying the phones are super color accurate, but compared to this monitor, it is a step up. So then we can kind of see the comparison. I don't know if you can even see that, but it's just a good reference point to check it on a couple different monitors. And one final thing I'll add, while this particular monitor is really bad, these tips can be useful on a wide variety of monitors. Because honestly, unless you're working on a super color accurate monitor, which costs thousands of dollars, you're never really going to be sure 100% what you're looking at. So these tools can be really useful, especially when starting out and learning. So you can work with the tools you got and build up your skills and maybe someday down the road get that fancy color accurate monitor. But it just helps you build up your skills and try and give as accurate images as you can with the equipment that you have. Anyway, back to past Nathan. So anyway folks, I hope that helps you with color grading on not so great displays and just learning to trust and use your scopes in your own color grading projects. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. So yeah, and let me know what you want me to cover next. You know, I got a little bit of time leading into next week. I can maybe take a viewer request. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye. Jeez, the camera's far away, I gotta, oh, there we go. <laughs>